this one. Uh, was it here? Promotion. Okay. okay, okay. Trying to understand the differences. Fantastic. Okay, fine. So you good to start the class today? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Okay, I'm not sure. This is the first time I'm logging into this Meet Google Meet or what is that? A bit strange. How do I present? Here it is. Why am I? I can't share my screen. Uh, sir, are you joined from Chrome or Chrome? Chrome, you can present, sir. Uh, Google Chrome, right? There will be a present now option. You can using that. You can uh, exactly. Program. I agree. It is asking your entire screen that window or uh, Chrome tab. I just gave the entire screen, but Chrome would like to share contents. I said no, Chrome. Google Chrome might not have permission to use screen recording on your computer. To grant, okay. It's my security settings. Okay. I mean, you're using your office laptop. Or? My own. Then. Okay. okay, let me quit and do it and wait. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see my screen, right? Hold on. Yeah, I can. See, I think uh, mother sir also can. Let's see. Mm -hmm. If the, the, this doesn't work for him, I'll send you the go to meeting only. Okay. Actually, we purchased this, so we are trying. Oh. <laughs> I think now I can share it. Perfect. Is it viewable, uh, Kuna, my screen? Uh, yeah, I can see. Okay. And, okay. okay, today we will see the replenishment planning. So this is a very, in SAP standard, it is a very straightforward approach. So not much a configuration or anything. It's more or less like a, a simple mathematical calculation. But in real time world, this is the most complex and the critical part of the, or I would say this is the heart of the retail business. Because this will ensure, this process will ensure that uh, uh, the merchandise is supplied correctly to the stores and uh, the stores are always stocked with the items and they never run out of the inventory. So this is actually the heart and the most crucial business process. So every company will have their own logic and algorithm built to cater this uh, uh, replenishment process. Mm -hmm. So it is like they can have a multiple chain of stores, but when all the uh, the stores raise a requirement it is impossible for them to send the stock daily right because it incurs a lot of transportation cost correct yeah. it it is like very very vague and it's very critical so how it all so in order to accommodate or reduce the transportation cost the transportation planning also needs to be made right so when a truck leaves mumbai dc 
and it is going to reach Bangalore, all the stores why connected in that route will be served by that truck. So that makes sense, right? And yeah. moreover, the truck has to be completely loaded and it should not be left with any spaces, which will lead to a, again a loss to the company. Mm -hmm. Right? Because it's spending a lot of money in transportation. So it has to optimize that transportation so that it can uh, it can actually uh, get the return on investment correctly. Correct? So everything will come into place. But in the standard, we will not see those things or not. It's very straightforward. How the replenishment process alone works. As I say, like, I, uh, how the, rep I mean, that's what we will see. But in real world, it is actually connected to many other external factors. Transportation, right? And uh, like uh, even uh, some of the company uh, stores will raise just, like, I just need, uh, my, my stock is going to run. Uh, deplete or it's going to uh, what I say it's going to get exhausted so get me one uh, five pieces of uh, that t-shirt that's the only order that might have uh, that order store might have placed but for that reason you cannot go bring your truck to that store and just deliver that five five uh, uh, t-shirts right so it doesn't make sense at all so it has to have that store must make an order that is uh, actually become justifying for a DC to go and deliver it, right? At least they must order like 150 cartons or five cartons at least. So it makes a uh, it makes a uh, necessity uh, or uh, it gives a necessity for a DC to make an effort to deliver that, right? Just for the five T-shirts, there is no point in delivering it, right? So from a business perspective if you see this replenishment planning is logic is completely driven by the business uh, logics so many other because the when you design this process business will be able to guide you rather than you just need to under uh, fit that in the technical terms how that actually works if the most process in my experience uh, past experiences i've seen the replenishment planning uh, logics will always go for customer because each company will have their own logic, right? So keeping that in mind, it will it is always a uh, 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 custom driven one. So you will have to write the codes, and based on that, the uh, logic has to be driven. Clear? Okay. So the goals of the requirement planning or the replenishment planning is automatic processing or process of supplying merchandise at the site level. So it will always monitor the st stocks inside and it will automatically trigger the requirements. And it, there is no manual intervention required. So what will happen every day, night, we will schedule this job, replenishment job. It will run for each store and determine what, which stock has gone uh, out of stock or it is going to nearly go out of stock. Based on that, the requirements will be generated automatically by the program. So that program will hold the logic, how the replenishment uh, how the logic should work which store should raise the requirement just in case if it is going to raise only there is only one stock then i will not raise the requirement so likewise you understand yeah so it can be implemented uh, centrally or decentrally when i say centrally it is like on a purchasing organization level you can run or at site level also you can run when i say decent okay so it depends you can group the sites and you can execute it at that level so, so the stores initially generate the requirement and it goes to the DC. If the DC has, then they supply the stock to the store directly. Or if they don't have, they collect the requirement and they generate a collective purchase orders towards uh, the vendor. And vendor, once he supplies, then he supplies back to the stores. It is just a normal fulfillment process. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if if I understand correctly, last time what we did was merchandise distribution. That was the how of, you know, how do we raise the order or how do we supply it to sites? And this is more of when do we raise the order and when do we supply it to individual stores? Is that correct? This is the other part. This is the pull process. The one that we saw was a push process. That is more or less on a season introduction time we do it. Because we would have ordered the stock and store doesn't know that that stock is, a one, uh, is going to be uh, sold out for that season at least, right? So it is the DC who saw the merchandisers who are advising the stores, okay, you're going to receive these many stocks, which is a, a fresh uh, of season. So you will have to sell it. So that's the They analyze the store performance based on that they push. But this is during the season. 
the pull process the other pull. part that we were discussing right so there we raise the central po uh, where sites are giving their requirements so this is more of that aspect right how do we raise the uh, process of that. requirement process of that okay that was more of a top down approach that is something the merchandise is pulled pushed from a top organization to the lower organization this is of a bottom up approach it is something the lower organization or the stores that is requesting the stock to the dc and dc finds what is the stock position if it can serve they serve it or otherwise they just raise some other order to the vendor okay. normally this kind of process will work only in groceries in fashion retailing normally this will not work because during the because every merchandisers will plan what is the uh, what is the requirement for that entire season what are they planning to sell that for that entire season and what many quantities that is the work of the merchandises they normally decide that so in in most rare cases during the once the season started we will not raise a purchase order because to make the garments to ship the garments it takes at least one or two months right it's not that you can just deliver it even because vendors from europe they place orders towards india or bangladesh or philippines so then after they receive the order they just start making it right so it takes a lot of lead time so it normally doesn't happen so that is why in fashion this is very unlikely to happen that they send it to the vendor and receive this one but whereas in groceries it's a very day in day out activity right based on the perishables and stocks yeah. they just keep on ordering as and when it gets depleted so it's a very common one in the groceries so okay. even in retail based on the vertical this this differs for grocery it goes like this but for fashion it is not that case it's more or less like we more concentrate on push process only you understand mm -hmm. that's how it is so even if they require my generate the requirement to generate at the store everything will be catered by this dc itself because they will have the stock as much as they wanted if that is clear they will not order for more thing because the season is going to end and even if they order it by the time it reaches and they wanted to put it in the store and they sell it it was not possible and they will have that stock remaining in the season as well. after the season is ended also the stock the possibility of the stock in the uh, to remain in the dc is high highly possible so that's why they don't recommend that okay clear with this so shall i proceed yeah okay so the overview of requirement planning so how does the replenishment of the requirement planning works so it is basically you have sold it right so this is requirement planning can be done in two ways you can use forecast you don't use forecast okay there are two options when you don't use forecast it is it works on a static values so it is something that you de define in the master data what some static values so this is my target stock this is my safety stock if any stock goes below this uh, under reorder point so any stock goes below the reorder point automatically generate a requirement to the target stock level that's a static value whereas forecast what it does is it will dynamically determine the values say for example now there is a it's a diwali season in the um, in india right mm -hmm. so what happens normally people will buy lot during the season correct mm -hmm. so when uh, during this time the sale will be high and that is the consumption value consumption value is nothing but how much the store has sold okay on calendar week 34 35 36 consider these are the diwali eve weeks so if i want to generate for calendar week 37 which is after diwali i cannot simply go by this consumption values because this is an inflated value or it is a temporary peak correct but that is not the average peak of the store you understand so yeah. so that is the reason when you do a for forecast what it will do is it will see last hey, you can de define you consider the last seven week calendar week uh, uh, sale period and you generate uh, based on a trend trend algorithm I mean based on the trend column or based on some different algorithms you can generate a forecasted value so what system will do seven days it will consider last seven calendar weeks it will consider what was the sale so these three weeks it will be inflated but last three weeks it would be very less right 
and it will also see okay when i use that trend algorithm it will say okay this is a this is a peak uh, i mean this is a season period that is the reason that is a peak in the sale so it will normalize that value and it will system will do some algorithms based on the standard or your own defined algorithms it will propose a value so this is the requirement for calendar 37 if you do a forecast it will not determine it will be not determined based on the static values that you define in the master data and based on this forecast value the static values you know that will be also dynamically updated because the target stock for during uh, season that is during the diwali weeks it will be high but soon after the diwali uh, is over that target value can be brought down correct yep so that is i dynamically adjusted based on the forecast okay so this is a very limited one as far as in retail is concerned but in case of forecasting and replenishment which i said like that's a separate box it has a very advanced and dynamic algorithms which you can use it that's where that system becomes more important okay okay so based on the forecast the target value when the requirement value will be generated and based that requirement value will be based on that purchase requisition or purchase order will be generated clear mm -hmm. any questions no it's fine see what i am trying to uh, give you as part of this uh, uh, classes i am trying to give you more of a business related information the system the standard is what i can show you right mm -hmm. but this is something that you can also learn because when i have given you a gist this is how the replenishment planning will work these are the master data requirement this is the basic configuration you can actually when you start working you can learn more by doing googling or anything you can learn but this is something that business logic that is has to go and set in your brain so that's when you will have to relate it and understand so that's where your the consultant work comes okay so better try to focus on the business logic rather than getting into this uh, this one how this replenishment process works why is this forecasting not integrated in this system but taken as a separate one because it requires other influencing factors like what are the calendar days so it it requires global event management global trade management if there is a block in that okay then it requires um, uh historic values right so it requires data from the point of sale directly to the forecast system so it process it, here it is very limited because we get in sap retail if we take the sale data normally we aggregate and take it but in forecasting we can uh, system we can uh use not an a non aggregated data so those kind of the de uh, details is what that system takes it this is the limitation of this system so that that way you can relate it okay okay so when i say the total planning with forecast if you want to do there are three types one is automatic reorder point planning the one is time phased planning and one is normal replenishment automatic dynamic replenishment so in all this forecast will be the essential factor and based on this forecast what is getting dynamically determined that is what it depends when you used to replenishment planning simply your future requirements will be determined based on the dynamic target stock the target stock that we define right so at any point in time in my store the maximum stock that i can hold for this levi's blue denim is 100 that is my target stock but that is a static one which can uh, when you use a forecast that can be dynamically determined during season it can go up to 150 but off season it can come down to even 70 based on the performance you understand if the past three weeks if the store has not performed i don't need uh, for that store 100 quantities because instead i can pull that stock and send it to some other store where it is performing good i can do that or i don't need i i will not uh, always gen even if the stock comes up for 70 i will not generate the requirement you know because the target itself has become 70 it's not 100 okay no so that way you can perform in time phase planning always your future requirement is dynamic nothing no other values are changing i'll explain you more on this time phase planning just keep that in mind now okay mm -hmm. okay automatic reorder point planning is like your entire static values will get dynamically determined even your safe reorder point safety stock whatever it is 
okay i'll explain you what safety stock is what reorder point is in the coming slides as well okay just keep that in mind so you have three types of planning automatic reorder point planning time phase planning and replenishment okay so this is the uh, algorithm that is uh, used during the forecast there are four models in retail which is very limited but with hana i think this is little bit little bit advanced but in forecasting and replenishment you have so many model algorithms okay one here what we are talking about is constant model trend model seasonal model seasonal trend model okay these are all pure standard algorithms so we don't actually read through the uh, algorithms and all okay so basically if you want to use uh, based on the seasonal model then this is based on it will detect what are the uh, upcoming seasons based on which it has to be which is a peak season which is a off off peak season based on that the requirements will be triggered right yep so prerequisites when you want to do a forecast there must be some prerequisites what are they if you want to do something a forecast you just need what are my previous say right that's very essential mm -hmm. so this consumption values are nothing but the previous sale period so these automatically get updated in the material master as and when you do a sale right right suppose it's a fresh article that is going to be introduced in the market you don't you don't have any uh sale for that what you will do you can manually key in uh the sale period but or you can refer to a similar article which is of that nature and take that consumption values and perform a forecast that is also possible okay okay and the next thing is like in the configuration you must have and the replenishment type that you are using right it must be having forecast as enabled that is you must use any of these three things automatic time based or replenishment not any other manual replenishment uh, types okay and in that article master you should have that rp type defined in the logistic dc or logistic i mean logistic store view okay okay so clear what are the prerequisites you should must, you must have the consumption values you must have the rp type which is enabled with forecast and that rp type must be defined in the article master okay yep so what are the data bases for the forecast obvious any goods issue that is any sale or any goods issues for that matter that is nothing but the alternative historical data or it can be accumulated sales data or purchase order quantities or stock transfer or anything okay so that will be uh, taken so the technical detail will be from where it takes so all the goods issues it takes from the me table and alternative historical data it takes from the wht table okay or okay. for this alternative historical data the data is fed from the sap bw as i said i am going to take only the aggregated data not the non aggregated data yeah. okay or it can be fed from other resources other sources like external systems directly from boss also okay you can use a body and you can fill in the it's a technical implementation where you can bring in the data and update this tables okay okay so first to forecast when you run what happens it is actually based on the uh, forecast uh, algorithm that is data or I mean, trend model or seasonal trend model or uh, constant model based on that it will do a, a, a calculation and it will propose a value but it is not necessary that you should go by with that value only it is just a proposal you can actually overrule that as well okay okay so this is what you can do forecast in two two process either online or you can do it in the background job so if what, what is advised to in an online mode if you have a very minimum you you need to maintain a historical values and you can run forecast and check uh, what is the result so this is in background you schedule the job and you follow up the job in the school parameters or Uh, when you run the job you will get the result in the uh, written in this pool where you can refer to it okay okay so which when you are advised to run a uh, for individual forecast and when you are run uh, expected to run the job in the para background if you are running the forecast for a limited articles okay in one side it is always 
and ways to run it and you can run it in the online mode suppose you are running it uh, forecast or the replenishment for all the articles in one side it, yeah. it will actually bring down the system if you run it in the foreground so it is always suggested to run it in the background okay, okay. suppose let consider you have one lakh articles hmm. and system will do calculation for all that one lakh articles which is unlikely to run it in the foreground you have to always run it in the background which will secure your execution speed and uh, maintain the system uh, uh, cpu peak uh, times it will okay. it will not hit the cpu peak processing time okay okay so methods and rp type so in this case in reorder point planning you have vb is manual and vm is automatic in time phase you have r1 is uh, without forecast and this is uh, automatic reorder means it includes forecast r2 okay so re what is uh, let's do one more. so here i'll explain you what is target stock what is uh, safety stock and what is reorder point there are three terms any guess what they are, what they are mean uh, target stock is our, our maybe uh, what is the stock that we should uh, may, what is the target or what is the set, what what amount of you know we need to sell or what amount what is the target for the store in short it's for that effective. article what is the maximum quantity i can have it that's it the target at any stock. point in time ah, yes correct okay hmm. uh reorder for safety stock safety stock is the uh, you know threshold at or below which time, at any point in time that is the minimum stock that you should put yeah below which if it goes then we have to bring up the stock up to reorder point no no reorder point is the middle between the target and safety stock that is if any stock goes below the reorder point then the replenishment should trigger that is like target is 100 reorder is 75 if the stock goes to 74 it immediately the replenishment process will trigger a, a requirement quantity of 26 okay about 100 minus 74 equal to 26. Okay. So safety stock, why we maintain it is like, say for instance, you have dispatched the truck, okay? All on a sudden, see, now you have dispatched your truck from Mumbai okay, to Chennai. Now, all on a sudden, due to corona situation, now they have said like, no, no cross-state movements. You have to be stay. You, your truck is now sent back for your your truck is blocked at the uh, Maharashtra border. Now I cannot. Pay. So all the stores in Bangalore and Chennai will have to survive, right? So right. attain unforeseen situation. So that is the reason we always maintain a that safety stock. So what happens if we go below the safety stock? Uh, ideal scenario it should not go that is the expectation but corona is like a, uh, maybe a wrong example because that is an uh, pandemic so we cannot do anything that's out, out out for a time but in case of a natural calamity maybe we want to survey for next one week that is possible with this safety plan, right hmm. But then I I am still not understanding the purpose. It, it it is just a number, right? It it is not serving any purpose now because anytime we go below reorder point, that's when replenishment triggers. Correct. See, uh, it was like uh, very hard and fast rule, so there will be no much big difference between a safety stock and reorder point. In real time, uh, real terms, the maximum stock for an article that I can hold is twenty five pieces. Okay. Mm -hmm. The reorder point would be like somewhere or close to 10. Safety okay. stock would be somewhere or close to 5 or 4. That's it. Nothing more than that. Okay. You will not have bigger differences. Hmm. Okay. This is a pretty straightforward blank carpet approach. Okay. So it's like uh, you just have everything over the table. That's it. But in real time with your custom logics, even though the stock goes below the reorder point, if that stock cannot be accommodated in that truck, it cannot be put in that. Because it will have, this store is as the highest priority. At any point in time, it, if it raises any stock, it has to be delivered first. 
so you have some priority orders as well right so when you travel from mumbai to thane you have 50 stores okay all the 50 stores have raised a requirement and all that requirement cannot be fit in a truck so now you have to prioritize which stores needs to be delivered first okay so those things also will come into picture so business will instead okay you group this store as the highest priority store so all the stores with priority one must be delivered first then you concentrate on the requirements that is generated by the priority two stores likewise you can go okay that's how it is now you understand uh, that there's there will be a lot of deviations exactly so that is what i said in real time it will be a complete uh, bo different ball game what you see in the book is something different it is a plain it's just a because in the book they can give you only the straightforward approach right in standard they can give you which is a uh, template which can fit all the customers they can just if they want uh, no i don't want i want to make a modification you, know, you are always welcome to do modification it will you can do that because it's a template you can just custom fit on your own need and uh, uh, your need so it's not a problem okay so you understand safety stock what does that mean reorder point what does that mean and target stock so always it will generate based on the target stock minus the current stock okay okay and if the stock goes beyond the reorder point mm -hmm. so this also explains the same thing so in order to cover the replacement lead time you always maintain a safety stock so that you you don't run out of the stock so time phase to planning when does this plan this type of planning will be used okay so now you have you are like uh, placed in a west coast of uh, maharashtra route okay you are sure and there are certain stores placed in the uh, east uh, eastern part of maharashtra now your dc is in the central okay now what happens every day your truck will not be dispatched to all the four all the routes right it will be dispatched only on certain days so you know what is my expected uh, say if i'm being on the eastern part of uh, maharashtra i know only during these days i would be able to get delivered so for, if i wanted to get uh, delivered on these days on this particular day i should make sure that all my orders are placed okay so uh, during this kind of planning you can use this time price planning so your order date is fixed and your delivery date is fixed delivery day is fixed so every tuesday you can order and every friday you will get delivered so based on that you have to plan you understand mm -hmm. so you will actually have a uh, calendar for that so every tuesday you can order and every friday it will be delivered that's what it is so suppose you are ordered on wednesday you will get delivered only on the subsequent uh, deli uh, uh, next uh, next delivery cycle only hmm. yeah. because your uh, lead time and all these things will come into consideration your planned delivery time is three days so if you order on wednesday thursday friday is only the second day so third day is missed and saturday sunday is holiday so it has to go follow the next delivery cycle okay that's how it is okay mm -hmm. so planning calendar is what that is now so master data what are the now the whole prerequisites and the from a master data perspective so as i said in the distribution center i mean in the site master you must have this replenishment planning and requirement planning parameter enabled okay and in article master in dcu and store view you should have the rp type what is the planned delivery time what is the large size who is the mrp controller and delivery cycle in case if you are using time phase planning and automatic PO needs to be enabled okay and if you are using forecast you must have the uh what do i say consumption values and forecast relevant enabled ones okay rp okay. so if we enable automatic PO, that's where if it goes below the reorder point that, oh. that is how it no, 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 automatic PO is based from PR to PO, automatic conversion. Okay. You make a purchase requisition, and that requisition needs to be converted to automatically via to PO. So that is the tick for that. Okay, okay. 
So control parameter, this I will take you in the configuration step. So this is what we were explaining the whole period. So replenishment, there are two types uh, in retail, which is uh, simplified approach and the detailed approach. Okay. So this is uh, uh, material management uh, based inventory management is the detailed approach and replenishment based is a simplified approach. So the follow-on documents can be purchase requisitions or purchase orders or sales orders or order deliveries, whichever way you want. So when you calculate the current requirement, the, the formula is different for these two things. In case of replenishment-based inventory management, it only considers the unrestricted use stock and what is the goods issue that I have done. That is what it takes into consideration. Whereas in a detailed approach, it can consider stock from different types, unrestricted, blocked, uh, quality inspection, all the stocks it can consider and all the relevant goods movement it can consider. It can expect what is expected to me in my store in the next two days. So when I generate today, I know, right? So I even though I raise an order today, I will get delivered three days later. Okay. But I'm expected a delivery in one day. So I will consider that as my current stock only, right? So when I want to place an order, your calculation will be different, like target stock, okay? In case of material man managed inventory, how it will be is target stock minus, I mean, uh, current, I mean, the replenishment requirement will be equal to target stock minus current stock, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, bracket, I mean, in, uh, my current stock, uh, you have to put it in the parenthesis or I'll write it in the Excel. That's better. It's hard to explain. So, the replenishment requirement is equal to, okay, what? Target stock yeah. minus current stock plus expected goods received, okay, minus expected goods issues. Got it? This will be the formula. Okay, for instance, target stock could be 100. Okay. But my current stock is already below the reorder point. So it is like 50. But I am expecting a goods receipt of how much? 10. And I am also expected to deliver some item in uh, some items to the customer of five quantities. Now see what is the requirement? 100, okay. okay. Equal to 100 minus Forty-five would be my target requirement. Clear? It doesn't so, yeah. go on fifty or fifty. It will go. What is I'm going to expect in next uh, in within my planned delivery time, and within my planned delivery time, how much I'm going to issue as well. That will also be taken into consideration. Whereas in case of uh, this approach, replenishment based inventory, it is simple. Target stock minus current stock. That's it. Hundred minus fifty, fifty. Okay. The process tips is what? So when you do this is uh, based on the, when you sell it in the point of sale, so point of sale, it gets automatically updated by a pass interface to your 
uh, SAP ECC system via, that is via out, I mean inbound processing. So that will update the uh, consumption values. Okay. So this we will see based on the cost inbound profile, it gets updated. So this anyways, we will see it in the uh, point of sale class. So here is the formula. So in case of replenishment place planning, it just uh, reads the stock, determine the expected receipts, the MM based inventory management, which I was talking about. Determine the expected receipts and issues. So expected stock, if it is greater, less than the target stock or the reorder point, then the replenishment requirement is calculated. That is target stock minus expected stock. So expected stock is nothing but current stock plus anticipated goods receipt minus anticipated goods issues. Okay. Okay. In case of simplified approach, it's simply target stock minus current stock. Finish. Okay. So this is the calculation parameter over here. So how the target stock is calculated. If it is static, it doesn't change. In case of dynamic, based on the forecast, this can be updated. Okay. Okay. So updating the tables. Now, which are the tables it gets updated? WRPL and WRPT. Okay. So current sales data and stock posting and determine the requirement of calculation data is read. And finally, it is written to the WRPL data and WRPT data. Okay. These are the two tables. Based on this, the calculation is generated and all on documents are generated. So that is it now. Under material management, consumption based planning, forecast. Consumption-based planning, yes. Master data. Check RP types. So this is the first one. So one, this is the one that will determine whether we are going to use forecast or not, right? So it will be the major control parameter which will control everything. So in our case, let's go to RP. So this is a replenishment. It will say whether I'm going to use forecast or not. Okay. Whether if I use forecast, it would be an automatic calculation of safety stock or reorder point based on this only. Okay. Now, if we go to automatic V2, now external, now forecast is manned, obligatory and individual forecast, it will consider the total consumption, not the individual consumption. So, both safety stock and reorder point are dynamically calculated. Okay. That is it. Now, if I go to rest, everything is standard, so you cannot maintain anything here for that matter. So, if I go to even forecast, weighing group, weighing average, nothing will be there. Okay, it is just on how many days you want to split and all those stuff. Rest, everything is controlled with the master data. Now, if I go to MM for that. UB02, ZST1, okay. Now, here, valuation, testing, and requirement planning. I need to enable this replenish replenishment parameter, okay. Yeah. Replenishment must be enabled. Clear? Similarly, maintain it for the next two site as well, okay. Okay. So this is the first one. At the site level, we have done enable the replenishment. Now, 
go to mm forty two. This replenishment type should be enabled. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then lot size must be enabled. Lot size is when I generate the requirement, only when it satisfies this lot level, that will be enabled by default. So replenishment, what to the maximum stock? It's not sure about this lot size. I'll be selecting. Now we will come to the reorder point. So reorder point, how much is the reorder point? How much is the stock we have here? So already we have 10 stock. This means the PC2 will not have anything. It be created, right? On order stock is already there. So let's put reorder point as 50. Okay. Save the stack as 25. Okay. Target stock as 100. Okay. Replenishment. Simple. Okay. And then. Okay, no forecast because this RP type doesn't have forecast, so let's leave it. So, planned delivery time is this one. Supply source is obviously two. Automatic PO is enabled. Okay. Now, save this. Okay. Now, if you want to generate replenishment, go to WRP1. That is the transaction. Now, give the material. Okay. What is the RP type that you are going to run? So basically, you need not even give this one. If you just give RP, whatever articles that are with RP type, RP, everything will be considered in the replenishment run. Okay. Okay. Just uh, now, now it is not that uh, clear data we have. I'm just giving the specific article. Replenishment lead time until five days. It will consider today is my planning date. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if I click on this, let's see. It will calculate and it will propose. This is a standard execution. But normally, this screen will be completely, we will not use, we will use our custom made uh, program. Okay. So, for ZST1, ZST2, what are the so replenishment requirements? Nothing is generated, why? No replenishment required from the customer solution. It is not updated. Target stock is 100. The order point is 50, right? Yeah. Because these are all static values, these things will get updated from uh, this one. What do I say? Uh, reference article, but uh, these things will not uh, the the static parameters will not get updated. So we have to key in. Okay. Now same. Okay, now we are on it. Now the replenishment requirement is hundred. Now, if I click on test mode, it will say what is the whether I can create it or without any errors or not. Okay. 
So this purchase order can be created. Now click on this. This is done. So now if you click it, it says stock transport order. It is generated to ZTC1 based on the supply source. Okay. Okay. If we go to two, so this order is created based on this requirement number. Clear? Mm -hmm. And in the retail, it is now it's not relevant to allocation table, so it is always non-allocation table relevant. So shipping here, it's going to go for ZK01. Okay. This is the very simplified method in standard approach. But okay. in real times, we go very complex. This logic is more enhanced to include more complex algorithms. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is it with this replenishment planning step. So maybe you can go through with different, there are different algorithms and different uh, RP types, which will give you different uh, results, different, uh, different uh, circumstances. You can use these based on okay. your need. And it has to be anyways customized. OK. Yep, that's all I had it for today. So okay. any questions on your side? So tomorrow, when can we meet? Uh same time no problem yeah i have uh markdowns and point of sale that is left for us after that you can practice and uh, we can schedule a couple of classes for your uh, doubt uh, clarifications and all those stuff then i with that i think we can wind the class maybe if you want okay so tomorrow we'll cover both the topics no, tomorrow I think we'll try to cover markdown only. Okay, so okay. if you want, we can cover both. Yeah, we can cover both. That's fine. We can cover both. Next week we can have it for your uh, verifications. Okay. Okay. See you then. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.